It's very different from the first film. It's got basically more of everything. Hold still! The Harry Potter franchise is absolutely legendary. We wanted to get into everything that went into what brought the world of Hogwarts to life. There are some incredible practical effects. Did you know the Weasley Kitchen really cleans itself? As well as some stunning locations that really made the visuals pop off the screen. Let's get into it. Number 1. Where Harry gets to speak in his iconic serpent tongue. In the book, instead of a metal door, this entrance is described as a wall that is decorated by two entwined snakes. When Harry speaks in parcel tongue, the snakes part and the wall opens. In the movie, we get a giant round metal door with seven snakes that fold in on themselves as an eighth snake slithers around the door, opening it. Definitely not the door for someone with a fear of reptiles. You'd also think that'd be all CGI, but it was actually all practical. Mark Bolimore, the special effects supervising engineer, created the door to actually open that way. He was also responsible for creating the locks and doors on the vaults in Gringotts Bank. Number 2. This one might actually surprise you. When Ron, Fred, and George rescue Harry from the Dursleys, this is the first time we get to see the inside of the Weasley home. Harry's in awe at the charmed objects being able to complete their own tasks, like dishes cleaning themselves, knives chopping vegetables, knitting needles making garments. Those were all mechanical props moving in real time created by the special effects team. They even recreated these moving props for people to see during the Warner Brothers studio tour. So technically, you could have your own self-cleaning kitchen if you wanted. Number 3. More particularly, the Divinity School, built in the 15th century and strictly used as a room where lectures and exams were held, it's undergone a significant transition. It's now only used for ceremonies, events, and tours. This room is used in the Chamber of Secrets as the hospital wing where they used to house the petrified students, with Hermione unfortunately being one of them. Number 4. Better known as the Hogwarts Express Bridge. We get a great view of it when Harry and Ron are on their way back to Hogwarts in the Weasley's Flying Ford. The Glenfinnan Viaduct is a railway viaduct in Scotland built from 1897 to 1901. It's the longest concrete railway bridge in Scotland at 380 meters. Number 5. A Forbidden Forest, Yet They're Always Going In the first film, they utilized Black Park in Ivor, a 560-acre reserve. But when it came to Chamber of Secrets, they filmed entirely in the Warner Brothers studio because they needed to create Aragog's lair. You can visit the Forbidden Forest on the studio tour. It houses about 19 trees that are over 12 feet in diameter. Have you been? Number 6. Let's talk about the Dursley House. If you've seen our other video about the Philosopher's Stone, you would know they originally used the actual suburban house as the set for the Dursley home. The owners ended up selling that home later and were sure a pretty profit was turned. So, this time the old house got a major upgrade to one of the biggest studios in the world. At least the exterior, anyway. Leavesden Studios was bought by Warner Brothers and is considered the ultimate film production facility, built by film Filmmakers for filmmakers. You'd never know how many scenes took place on these incredible backlots. Number 7. Located in the village of Lackick, the abbey was found in the early 13th century. It was a nunnery until it was sold in the 18th century and was then converted into a residence. It was used for several interior Hogwarts scenes. One, in particular, was in the Chamber of Secrets after Harry leaves Professor Lockhart's classroom and hears the basilisk for the first time. The abbey was also featured in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Number 8. An Absolute Stunning Mountainside Scenery in Scotland Glencoe served as a set in several of the Harry Potter movies. It makes sense given the unique dramatic atmosphere it puts off. You might recognize it as the backdrop of Hagrid's Hut, the turreted gatehouse of Hogwarts, and the Hogwarts Bridge. Number 9. The oldest film studio in the world. Named after the London borough of its origin, this studio has been the center of its British film industry since 1902. That's a hundred years before Chamber of Secrets even premiered. One of the first on-screen versions of Hamlet was created there in 1910. Since then, the cameras have been non-stop. Tons of iconic BBC TV shows of the 60s, 70s, and 80s were produced at Ealing Studios. Some names you might recognize are Doctor Who and Monty Python. It seems like every set and location used in Harry Potter is full of incredible history. 
Number 10. Here comes the part where we talk about Platform 9 and 3 quarters. In the movies, Platform 9 and 3 quarters is located between Platform 9 and 10. But in real life, those platforms are separated by tracks. They actually used Platforms 4 and 5 for filming. If you visit the station today, you can visit their own rendition of Platform 9 and 3 quarters as well as a Harry Potter shop. J.K. Rowling chose King's Cross for the films because it holds some personal magic for her. It's where her parents first met. Number 11. Stepping outside after Ron and Terry miss their train, we get a wonderful establishing shot of the magical St. Pancras Station. Though yes, King's Cross Station was used for the inside shots, St. Pancras was used for the outside. The station first opened in 1868 and is one of the great achievements of early Victorian engineering. With its stunning Victorian Gothic architecture, it remains one of the world's most elegant stations to this day. Number 12. How can we forget? You'll pay for that one, Malfoy. Eat slugs! At least Ron gets to throw up slugs in front of a scenic church. This scene was one of the many shots at Durham Cathedral. You can visit the cathedral's chapter house and you can step inside Professor McGonagall's classroom, where the students transfigured goblets into rats. Number 13. A lot goes down on the staircase. You might remember these iconic steps from the first film when all of the first year students walk in to meet Professor McGonagall, but they were also used in the Chamber of Secrets when Harry and Ron show up late to Hogwarts, as well as in a flashback scene where we see Tom Riddle having a conversation with Dumbledore. Christ Church is a working school, as well as a religious institution, but with the purchase of one ticket, you can climb up these steps in real life. Number 14, also known as the School of Hogwarts, a beautiful historic castle with over 950 years of history. Owned by the Percy family, the castle remains a family home to this day for the 12th Duke and Duchess and their children. Also, this strange piece of architecture is no stranger to the media, not only serving as Hogwarts in both the first and second Harry Potter movies, but it's also been used in Downton Abbey, Transformers, The Last Knight, and many, many others. Number 15. Annick Castle may have had the exterior shots taken care of, but Gloucester Cathedral was the star of Hogwarts corridors. While filming the movie, they had to make sure all light switches and electrical outlets were covered up to look like stone. They also had to cover up the halos on the stained glass, because they didn't want anyone to think it was actually being shot inside a church, as well as the hundreds of tombstones on the cloister floors. Harry Potter is chock full of incredible locations throughout England and Scotland, immersive set design on the back lots of Warner Brothers Studios, and charming churches and train stations that hold more history than an entire semester of school could cover. What was your favorite set piece in the film?